Welcome back to Full Deck Gaming. It's Slimeball, and today, as promised, I have a top lane guide for you. How to handle laning phase with a melee champion. I chose Garen because he doesn't have mana, he's easy to play, and you can just easily spin to win. He is going up against Alawi, and we're going to see just how well I'm able to counter Alawi and deal with Alawi's crap. I can't stand playing against Alawi, but I do a pretty decent job in this, in my opinion. If you enjoy the video, be sure to drop a like and leave a comment down below. If you want to stick around and see what else we have for League of Legends, you need to hit that subscribe button. We have a lot of really cool things coming for League of Legends videos. You're not going to want to miss it. We post new videos every Friday. Let's get right into how to handle Alawi. So Alawi right now only has Q because she's level 1. As long as I avoid that, I'm fine. It's slow. It's really telegraphed. I don't have to worry about that much. The thing that I do have to worry about is when Alawi has her E. When her E is up, I need to play safe, I need to play behind minions, I need to avoid getting hit by that. Her Q and E are both slow and telegraphed though, so as long as I can avoid that, I am pretty safe. I'm going to be last hitting minions and not trying to push wave. I want her to push towards me so that when she finally does miss that E or miss her Q, when it's on cooldown, I can punish her for it. And that's exactly my entire strategy right now. Warwick coming in clutch with this gank though, seriously. I was not expecting a level 3 gank, even though I am a Warwick man and I do level 3 ganks all the time. See, I did get caught in the E there, but Alawi doesn't really have the damage to do anything, and she, you know, stupidly decided to teleport there. Warwick had to back off because of tower, but it's not a huge deal. I was able to get the kill there because she was basically a sitting duck. I'm very happy with that. The idea is, is to not get hit by that E though. That E is the only thing that she really has, and even then, right now, especially right now, she does not have the damage to do anything with it. She can hit me with that E, but she's not ever going to be able to curse me. However, I am going to curse myself and back off and back too far away to where one, she can't damage me, but her tentacles will still try and hit me because, you know, graphic stupidity. I know Alawi just burned her teleport, and I know that she's going to take a while to get back into lane, so I am going to be using my abilities on minions right here. It's not something I would normally recommend, especially with Alawi in lane. See, she's back. I don't want to be using abilities right now because they have cooldown and because she'll be able to punish me. So I'm going to hit a quick recall, get an item advantage on her. That's my plan. That's going to really benefit me in the long run. Just having a long sword and cloth armor here is going to put me so much further ahead because Alawi is not going to be able to do as much damage to me and I'm going to be able to do a lot more damage to her. That is huge for me. It's going to allow me to snowball the game and snowball a power spike that will instantly keep me ahead of her at all times and I don't even need to use my teleport right now because Wave is going to freeze and get caught right there before it hits tower. So it's not going to crash and I'm going to be able to maintain my CS lead, which is a major benefit of this, which is why I don't have to use teleport, like I said. And yay, I got the can. Let's go. Notice how Alawi isn't even coming up to try and last hit these minions. I'm trying to clear real quick so that I can push it just back a little bit further. Because I know Alawi is not going to want to even come close to messing with me. See, she just perked her Q. I'm not punishing her because I want to kite these minions and I want to make sure that they don't crash into tower because they are one tap from the tower. So my game plan right now, knowing that I am ahead, knowing that I do have all of my abilities now because I hadn't picked up W yet for some odd reason, is I want to bait out her E so that she misses me and then I can punish her for it because it has such a long cooldown. I can do a lot of damage to her very quickly and I can also tank more damage than she can right now. That's why I'm hitting the tentacles right here. Is I want her to step up. I want her to go after me. That's what I want. I want to bait that out. See, now her abilities are on cooldown, and I'm able to completely back her off these minions. She cannot even come close to stepping to me because she knows that she will be hardcore punished for that. Zoning her off of minions is going to keep her from catching up. It's going to give me that much more of a gold advantage. So when I finally do have to recall, I will be able to stay ahead even if I'm not getting kills. I hit 6 and Alawi has to respect that. She's also trying to bait me out, so she's going to flash on me in a second. The reason she did that is because Viego is coming top. Luckily I have that bush warded. She got me with that E. I'm going to back out and curse myself, knowing full well that I'm probably about to get ganked, which of course I am. See, he's right there. Nothing they can do. Those tentacles are really slow. I mean, watch this. They're not going to come anywhere near me. Like, I can tank that one. And now the curse is over. That's all her E does. That's all it does. 
It's not really a big deal if you know how to handle it, know how to play against it. She can't chase me like that. I'm fine. Not an issue whatsoever. Now my wave is crashing, and I've got another one coming. So from that trade, Olawi is pretty weak, and my passive, I get my health back, which is huge, especially when she's not hitting me, she's not trying to contest me. I'm getting close to a tower dive right here. Olawi has no clue. She's burning through her abilities on minions. The moment that she's missing that, I can go all in here because I know that she won't actually be able to do much damage to me. Wave is going to push back. She's going to step up to it. And this is going to be an easy kill right here. So I'm going to do the exact same things that I'm doing. I'm going to zone her off of minions and I'm going to bait out her abilities. The moment her abilities go down, you see me start to step up because I know that she has it on cooldown. But I really want to bait out that E. I want to bait out her strongest ability first. When it's gone, I know full well I can go all in here. See? Keeping her off of minions, keeping her away. Alright, baited out her Q. I'm going to Q on her, E on her, and then here comes the ulti. Easy kill, just like that. The moment she put her ability down, I know she doesn't have enough damage output to come anywhere close to dealing any damage to me whatsoever. And even if she did, after that kind of all in, I can back off and stay in her tower and just wait for my passive to heal me again. So now that I've got a minion wave, I am going to try and push this and get to tower. It's not going to happen though because the next wave is about to come up to tower. You can always tell because your minions are going to match theirs. So I'm not actually going to be able to crash this wave, unfortunately. Alawi is going to get back to lane, and then we're going to be in the exact same situation, except she is going to have a freeze, which really isn't good for me, especially considering that Viego is a deadly champion who is getting kind of fed. Of course I say that and he just gets killed by Diana, so you know, what do I know? What do I know? You know, I was top lane. Okay, got hit by the E. I'm going to back off that. She is not going to want to contest this. I don't care about getting cursed. It's not like these little tentacles are going to hit me at this point. I'm not worried about it whatsoever. So I can do really whatever I want. She's more concerned about minion wave and those things have a really slow dial up time. So no issues. No problem whatsoever. I'd rather get cursed than end up getting a ton of damage from her because I'm, you know, standing near her. I can just back off of that. What's she going to do? Is she going to chase me? Not a chance. She loses that 10 out of 10 times, especially at this point in the game. Now I'm stepping up. I'm farming minions. The entire point of top lane is to get bored the slowest, if that makes sense. So I'm fully prepared to be bored, to be slow pushing, to be just farming minions the entire game. And if she wants to initiate a fight, I'm fine with that because I'm going to win that every time. I'm going to get that kill. That's exactly what my game plan is. We just saw her move up into river, but I've got a bunch of minions, so I'm going to try and set up a freeze right here. So this game is at 9 minutes and 24 seconds. Keep an eye on that and just see how long the waves sit right here, right past the gank line, right on that corner, just past river. We're going to see how long I have the wave stuck around this point. That's huge for me. Because Alawi can't farm this. She's free to roam and do whatever the hell she wants. But she can't do anything. She can't get to these minions. I'm zoning her off of it because of where I'm standing. She can't do anything to get any of these kills. Nothing. She is stuck, which means I get to free farm. So, this is really good for me. Because Alawi cannot do a thing. This is the beauty of setting up a freeze. Is that she is stuck here. She can roam in lane. But that really won't do much for her because she doesn't have any kills and because she's unable to really do much against, like, the Diana down there. Now, I see you're going into River, and yeah, I'm sick of being bored. I do want to get a little bit greedy. I do want to start a trade, but I am going to let the wave start to push up again because I want to go for another kill. It's going to lead to my downfall, spoiler alert. But this is what I'm trying to do is I'm, at this point, I want to stop the freeze. I want to move up. She just used that. I'm going to flash on her, and she's just out of range of my E. So I just burned my flash for nothing, but she just let go of her E. So, it's okay. It was a decent trade. Unfortunately, her E comes back a lot faster than my flash. In hindsight, I really should have kept that freeze going at least until I had another ward so I could ward Riverbush. Instead, I decided to push up and I'm sick of being bored. I baited out her E. There's her Q. This is an easy kill for me. She ults. I can go all in also. Problem is, is I'm greedy and want Tower Gold and didn't notice Viego. Due to that, rest in peace. I don't have Flash. I am screwed beyond recognition. There's nothing I can do about it. I cannot fight him. I'm just, I'm screwed. I'm actually... I probably could have fought this. Who am I kidding? I'm two levels up on him. Uh, hindsight really is 20-20. However, you know what? I needed it back anyway. Worst things have happened. 
look at all the items I'm able to buy. Alright, Warwick's fighting in River, and I want revenge, so I'm going to burn my teleport in here to try and help him out, because that would be revenge, and it would also mean free Rift Herald for us. Instead, Vigar decides to just absolutely obliterate him, and now I have to run for my life. Okay, this not so great, but my lane is frozen, so worse things could have happened. And they are going to go and get Rift Herald now, which means that I'm going to contest this with Diana, because why not? My biggest concern right here is Vigar. I know he's squishy, but I also don't have any magic resist whatsoever right now. So I kind of want to kill Vigar first, especially if he's got that CC like that. I'm able to avoid it, but Diana goes in on the Diego, and so can I. That's easy claps right there. Then Alawi comes out the cup, and this Alawi is basically less than a super meme at this point, so I really couldn't care less. Diana got cursed, whatever. Vigar hits me with the E. That E has a big cooldown. My goal is Rift Herald right now. I'm really not worried about either of them until I see just how fast I'm killing Vigar. Vigar does kill it, but I am going to be able to get that kill pretty easily. And then Alawi is absolutely clueless, not going for Eye of the Herald. Don't know what Alawi's deal is, but I'm just going to point this out there. This is ridiculously low elo for that level of play. So I just got, what, two, three kills in that exchange? All right, that means I'm going to recall. I got 1,300 gold to spend. I can buy my Stride Breaker, which is a huge power spike for me as well. All right, we're back in lane. The strategy is still the same. Punish her CS by zoning her and bait out her E and then go all in. That is my entire goal. That's always been my goal. That's exactly how this is going to work. Keeping her off of that. But it's actually going to get to the point where I'm frozen in lane, in which case I'm going to start roaming so that she thinks she can do something. Yep, still can't catch her, still don't want to tower dive because there's no point in even risking it. I know she has her ultimate. I know I win that fight, but if tower wins that fight, then you know what, it's really not worth it to me. So zone is frozen a little bit there. I don't really want to be playing that close to tower because of potential gank by Diego. And you know what, there he is. And I have to back off the of Scuttle Crab. Luckily, Scuttle Crab ain't worth shit anymore, thanks to Riot Games nerfing that. Really benefits the junglers, or, you know, hurts the junglers, depending on who it is. Doesn't matter, it means I'm not going to contest that in lane. I am going to take out this Control Ward, though. There's no point in me leaving that up there. That's just free gold sitting on the table, especially when I know Alawi doesn't want to contest. Viego has gone mid, and I'm going to get this cannon and start pushing late. I'm also going to start starting little skirmishes with Alawi, baiting out her abilities and just narrowing down her health bar a little bit, so I'm able to just things like that, just like that. That's all I really want to do. I want to start lowering that health bar to where she still feels safe, but where I can easily get to her. She just missed E. Unfortunately, I can't get up near her without having to tank tower shots like that. I'm really not trying to do that. But I do want to start little skirmishes. My health comes back a lot faster than hers does because that's my passive. So I want to start getting little skirmishes. Her abilities are gone right now, but she is chilling under tower. She stepped up right into my queue. Absolute mistake. That's easy claps for me. I don't even need to use my ultimate. Easy kill right there. Now I'm going to go back and recall and spend my gold. In hindsight, I wish I had used my ultimate there because I would probably still have a little bit more health. And I'd be able to get some plates right now. But hindsight is always 2020. I'm going to build some thorn mail. Now right here, I don't necessarily condone doing this during lane phase, especially with my teleport down. However, look at top lane being pushed like that, and then look at bottom lane and mid lane. No one's defending mid lane right now, and bottom lane's getting pushed. They could really use some backup there, so I'm not going to return to lane just yet. I'm comfortable with Alawi getting a little bit more CS, even though I've shut her down most of this game, because I'm going to be able to help my ADC help my support, and really fix this giant shit show of a time that we got going on down here. So this is the closest thing to a team fight that we're going to have in this video, so I might as well tell everyone what my job is in a team fight. My job is to take damage. I'm going to tank that. I want to be the one who gets hit. My job is really not to output damage. I want other people to get kills. It's my job to get the damage hit on me. If I can take a ton of damage, and that means Yasuo and Warwick aren't getting a bunch of damage done to them, that's very good for us. That's good for me too, because they're focusing on the tank. I'm starting to build tank here. I got the Berserker's Greaves, and I got a Bramble Vest. I want them focusing me, because I'm not building output damage. I'm building tank. I want to have more health, and I want them to continue to try and lower my health bar the entire time. I feel like I just repeated the same thing like six times, but I really needed to say something while we were going back to lane, because of course that's what I'm going to do. Now I'm losing CS here, luckily my wave clear is fantastic, so I really didn't lose all that much. 
It's at this point in the game. I'm level 12. My CS is much higher. I've got 7 kills. This Alawi is absolutely no threat to me. And I just want to kill her to get her out of lane so I can start doing damage to this tower. As I, you know, absolutely whiff on these minions. Jesus, I suck. But yeah, Alawi can't step to me at all. I'm ready to tower diver. I'm ready to just output a fight. So I'm going to just clear these minions and uh, start to bully. It's at this point in the game I can tower dive and then just kill the rest of the tower pretty much in the same movement. It would be a real shame if, like, Vigar were to teleport top and then, like, I don't know, if Diego got Rift Herald or something. That would really, really screw me over, you know? Like, Alawi's not even trying to last hit with her Q. She's actually just trying to do damage to the minions. So I'm going to go right after her and Q the tower instead, or else this would be a 1v1 trade. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. I'm still able to avoid the tentacles. And I get to take tower shots the whole time. All right. Five seconds till my passive kicks in, and life is going to be beautiful again. All right. Come on. Step out, Alawi. Come on, Alawi. Diana going down here is terrible, actually. That's... I was not paying enough attention to the mid lane or the jungler in this game whatsoever. My entire goal was just bully the hell out of Alawi, and it was working out really well. Unfortunately, map awareness does matter in the top lane, despite what you might think. That's a nice health bar, Alawi. It'd be a shame if someone were to wreck it. <laughs> Guess what I just did. Alright, time to take this tower and really, you know, win lane, right? That's that's the goal. That's what's happening. I'm gonna clear these mains so I can hit this tower. Alright, fantastic. And cue the teleport by Vigar. My dumbass thought this was Alawi, and so I'm like, alright, whatever, I don't give a shit. Nope. I am screwed. So close to winning lane. So close to... I should've just killed the tower and then killed Vigar. Instead, I'm backing off because I know Viego is right here, and, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's unfortunate. Still don't have magic resist. I'm still not trying to step to either of them right now. Unfortunately, I have the great idea to recall, get my Giant's Belt, and then teleport right back, not realizing just how fast they're going to destroy this tower. I just wasted my teleport and got stunned by Vigar right there. Does this count as losing lane? Let me know in the comments down below, did I lose lane here? Because that tower is one tapped and Alawi didn't do fuck all to that tower whatsoever. I also got slum there somehow. All right, Warwick can handle Viego, which is fantastic. Diana's also here. That means I can go after this Vigar right here. Unfortunately, tower is still there and I'm, you know, trapped. So Vigar and Alawi think that they're safe under tower, but I do have Diana. Diana knows that if I go in and tank this, she's going to be able to clean up really easily. So I'm going to take out the tower and just tank their damage. Diana's going to step up and just absolutely kill anyone and everyone. Actually saved my life because Alawi tries to hit Diana instead of hitting me. Anyway, that's all I have for this video. Did I win lane? Let me know in the comments down below. If this video helped you, let me know in the comments down below and drop a like on this video. We have new League of Legends videos every Friday. And I hope you want to be a part of it. I will see you on the next one.